All right, you've got your urban supercharger, you got your V2 supercharger, you got your V3 supercharger, and now V4 supercharging is coming. It's in Europe now. We don't have it just yet here in the US, but I think it's inevitable. We're gonna go through all these different superchargers. How fast are they? What do they mean for your car? And why are you not charging any faster sometimes? We've got it all. This is Supercharging 101. We're gonna break it down for you in this video. All right, first up, we're gonna take a look at an urban supercharger. These behind me are V2s and V3s, but we did visit an urban supercharger location in downtown San Diego in a parking garage, and this is what they look like. As you can see, there is no pass-through. They're kind of a solid, they're shorter, they're smaller, and they max out at 72 kilowatts. No matter what Tesla you're driving throughout history, uh, you should see those speeds. And they don't share, so you don't need to leave space in between other Teslas. Don't worry about that. Everyone is gonna max out provided your battery is preconditioned and warm and, and optimum temperatures and all that stuff, everybody should see those 72 kilowatt speeds. So that is an urban supercharger. You may see one of those along your journeys while you're road tripping or living with your Tesla. Taking a look at a V2 supercharger, you can notice the uh, cable is thicker than the V3s, which I'm about to show you. And there is a silver ring around the handle there. And this one, you can tell by the flag on the top as well. Not every location is gonna have these red flags on top telling you exactly the max speed. So this one is gonna be up to 150 kilowatts. And this bank of superchargers all along here are all V2s. The max you're gonna get is the 150. Doesn't mean you're gonna get that the entire charging session. It just means you're gonna see that for about 10% or so of the charge. So this particular location has V2s and V3s over there. So you kind of have to be on the lookout for that. A lot of times on the nav, it's gonna say up to 250 kilowatts, but that doesn't mean the entire location is set up to do that. Another thing to notice about V2 superchargers, you're gonna see uh, letters and numbers at the bottom of them. This one is 1B, this is 1A, and what that means is these two will be sharing. So this would be a situation where you would want to leave a space in between. V2 superchargers are the only superchargers that suffer from the sharing situation. So you might have heard that you need to leave space in between to make sure that you're not sharing. That's not necessarily true. They have to be on the same number set to also be sharing. V2s are the ones that share. V3s, park wherever you want. You can park next to anybody you want. You will get the full charge, just like an Urban. Let's head to the V3s right now. All right, walking up to these uh, V3 superchargers, you can see the flag on the top says up to 250 kilowatts. You can tell by the handle as well, it has a uh, no silver ring right there on the handle. Also, the cable itself is thinner. So this is what a version three supercharger looks like. Uh, maxing out at 250 kilowatts. Doesn't mean you're gonna get that the entire charging session though. That's just the max and usually lasts about 10% or so. So that is what a V3 supercharger looks like. All right, so we have shown you the differences between the superchargers. The Urbans weigh in at 72 kilowatts. They're smaller, there's no pass-through, so that's how you can tell that those are Urbans. There's no sharing whatsoever on those, so don't worry about that. V2s are the different ones that you need to kind of pay attention to. They have the silver ring around the nozzle, they have the thicker cable, and those are the ones that are suffering from sharing. So you need to be aware of the number situation, 1A, 1B will share, for instance, but for instance, 1B can be next to 2A, and you could still be next to each other, but they're not sharing. V2s run at a maximum of 150 kilowatts, but you're not gonna see that during the entire charging session. Many new Tesla owners think that this number behind me is what you're gonna see throughout the entire session. You may never see that. You may only see it for a short time. It really depends on if your battery is preconditioned, if conditions are right, all that sort of thing. And usually even then, you might only see it for about 10% of your entire uh, supercharging session. V3, like the one right behind me, run at 250 kilowatts. They do not suffer from sharing unless there are certain crazy wild conditions. Super hot, the entire location is full, you're most likely not gonna see sharing problems. So, like this car is doing right now, this red one is parking next to this white one. Don't worry about it. 
they're gonna both see full speeds on a V3 supercharger running at 250 kilowatts, provided this red one is pulling in with, uh, you know, good conditions, low state of charge, warm battery, that sort of thing. And finally, V4 superchargers. I'm gonna put some stats up on the screen. I didn't know them ahead of time, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what V4 holds in store for us in the future. It's gonna be pretty cool. We, they're in Europe now. We're not seeing them here in the US just yet, but uh, get ready for faster, even faster charging, even though current Teslas are not, you know, rated to <laughs> go any higher than 250. Finally, I should mention that some base model Teslas only max out at 170 kilowatts. So even if you roll up to a 250, you're never gonna see more than say 175. I've seen 175 on my base model Tesla, even though it's rated at 170, but you're never gonna see that 250. So if you roll up on a supercharger or you've done it a bunch of times and you're like, why am I not seeing faster speeds? Oh, you might have the base model Tesla and that could be a reason. Also older Teslas are not gonna see the 250 kilowatt speeds but that's just the nature of technology and it keeps evolving and that's the reason why. Hey, if you found this video useful as a new Tesla owner or even a longtime Tesla owner and you might not have known some of this stuff, uh, feel free to like, subscribe and hit the bell. We totally appreciate it. And how about super tipping? I just got my first super tip. That was really cool. Thank you so much for our first super tipper. Totally appreciate it. So I'll catch you on the next video. That is the one all about supercharging.